roles and responsibilities that our elected officials or appointed officials have helps us be able to keep them accountable. And we can't forget the importance of the role that we play in the checks and balance. Yeah, but just as we are kind of ignoring the rule book on the three branches, we also ignore the separation of powers horizontally because you've got this vertical separation of powers between the three branches, but the founding fathers also said, wait a minute, you've got state and local governments as well as the federal government, and we wanna make sure the federal government can't take over the state and local. And so what they did in the Constitution is they said, there's 17 areas the federal government is allowed to operate in. We call them enumerated powers. Other than those 17 areas, the Constitution says everything else belongs to the states and the people which includes things like education, which is not a federal thing, and transportation, all these things that have become so federal, that's not in the mm -hmm. rule book. And so that's why it becomes important for us to know the rules so that we can elect people to office who will uphold the rule book and play by the rules because America is the most stable nation in the history of the world because we have followed that rule book for so long. But the further we get away from it, the less stable we become. Yeah, and, and the reason, as he mentioned, this, this notion of federalism, that there's a separation between the federal government and the state governments, the reason that matters, and the reason that so many things the federal government does now they weren't supposed to do, is because it's better to have that at the local level where there is more accountability, there is more control. If you think about people in Washington, D.C., how often do you see your congressman or your senator walking down the street or at the local Walmart? Hardly, never, ever, ever do you see that. Well, then they're not really that accountable to you. If you can't go up and say, hey, what you did, that wasn't, that wasn't right, that wasn't great, they're not going to be as responsive to what the people want. And so the idea was there should be more things at the local level, at the state level, where there's greater accountability to the people, and the people can determine those directions better. And the idea was, and I think Abraham Lincoln was the guy who pointed out that the government should only do for people what they cannot do for themselves. Well, there's a lot of things the federal government is doing now, and, and they've almost arbitrarily taken that power. That's not really their role. But as you mentioned, if we don't know what the rule book says, then we can never say, uh, you're not supposed to do that. And this is why it matters that we come to learn what this rule book, so to speak, says, but also that we even understand the distinctions, the jurisdictions. There's three branches, and that's also at the state level and the federal level, but in, inside those three branches, there's jurisdictions, and then that the states have power that the government doesn't have. And so it, it does matter that we kind of learn and see those distinctions so that we can have accountability, which is really what our, our government needs to operate well. Yeah, it needs accountability, and, and actually, that rule book, one of the things that happened when we added the Bill of Rights, which is a listing of all the specific things government can't touch, those who wrote that Bill of Rights to take that power away from the government also said the most important part of the Bill of Rights are the Ninth and the Tenth Amendments. The Tenth Amendment says, states, federal government, here's the deal. If we did not in the Constitution specifically say the federal government can do this, then the states get to do it. So everything that's not specifically called out, and that's those 17 enumerated powers. So the 10th Amendment says, if it's not one of those 17, states get to do it. And the 9th Amendment says, now we've listed a lot of rights here in the Bill of Rights, but we didn't list all of them. We, we listed religion and petition and speech and assembly and self-defense. But it says there's many more rights that the people retain. In other words, it's their power. They didn't give it to the government. Government can't exercise that. So understanding a limited government is really key. And this is where electing people to office is so important because people come into office with a philosophy. And if their philosophy is, you need more government and government can do so much more for you than you can for yourselves. And I need to tell you what rights you should exercise because some are more important than others. If we elect people like that, they will do that. And as a result, we'll get away from the, the rule book that really has caused us to be the most stable nation in the world. Yeah, one of the ideas that has been long uh, explained and defended, supported, promoted in America is that government's primary role is to protect the rights of the individuals. And what we are seeing now is you have more and more government officials who are being elected who don't seem to understand that your job is to make sure the government never infringes on my God-given rights. And maybe part of the problem is that very few people today really know what those God-given rights are. That, that certainly would be an issue because how do you protect something that you don't know even exists? But also, we've elected far too many people who, who don't understand the rule book, who, who don't understand that in the three branches, there is a different jurisdiction for each branch and they each have a defined role and there's different power and authority granted to each. And there was a reason, right, we had a separation of powers because we recognize there's a sinful nature in, in man and, and we want to make sure we don't give too much authority to somebody who's going to violate and do bad things. 
But the fundamental principle of America has always been government's job is to protect the rights of the individual. And this is something we're just seeing more and more that rights are being violated, rights are being taken away. And it's time that we start thinking more intentionally about who are we electing and how well will they defend and protect our rights. Yeah, the Constitution really did a great job of giving a number of checks and balances. We have checks and balances between the branches, between the levels of government. The biggest check and balance is given to the people with their ability to choose their leaders. We're the best check and balance on all of this. And if we don't exercise that influence to say, hey, you guys are out of bounds, we're putting a new team in there, we're taking you out, we're, we're substituting somebody else. If we don't do that, then we might as well not have a rule book. And it's important to remember that as we choose elected officials, those elected officials, their ideology is gonna come out in the way they operate government. And the way government operates is really just a reflection of who voted in the last election, because that's who chose who those elected officials were. And, and we get to choose at the local level, we choose at the state level, we choose at the federal level. And as, as we're looking so much now at, at our government and our nation, and we see chaos and frustration, there's so many problems, well, this is why it's so important that Christians get involved. And as we get involved, we have to remember that we need to look now, be very intentional about thinking we need to elect people who are going to protect our God-given rights, who, who are going to respect us as individuals, who are not going to come and take more rights away from us or grow the government beyond what it should be really intended to do. That's why we need to go back, read the Constitution. Let's go back, read the Federalist Papers, learn what the role, the purpose of government is. And then as Christians, we need to get involved in the process and vote for people who will protect and defend our rights.